Welcome to Biblical Insights with David Gooding, a Myrtlefield House podcast. When we study scripture, we ask two basic questions. What does it say? Why does it say it? What I'm doing, therefore, is looking for what I would call the thought flow. This is not just a philosophical theory. There's gospel actually works. Let me tell God what I think of God. Let God pay all so long as God be mine. Paul's epistle to the Colossians reminds us that ultimately Christ is all we need. He is our initial salvation, our growth and sanctification, and our final glorification. Studying Colossians reminds us of our status as God's children, showing us how to walk with Christ while avoiding the enemy's pitfalls. In this episode, David Gooding clarifies what Paul means when he says we died, were buried, and have been raised with Christ, who is the source of the new life given to every believer. So now we're going to set out today on the enjoyment of this new life that God has given us and try to think through with God intelligently what the imprecations are of this new life and how it is expected to work itself out in our daily behavior. And we notice that chapter 3, verse 1 begins by saying, If you then were raised with Christ, do this, do that, and do the other. If you were raised with Christ. Now it would be very important for us here to understand exactly what Paul means by this, so that let me spend some time on it. If you were raised with Christ, do this, that, and the other. Well, let me ask a question to start with. Have you been? Have you been raised with Christ? It's no good proceeding if we haven't, is it? Because the whole of the outworking of what follows depends on this initial thing, if you have been raised with Christ. And if you haven't, it's no good attempting what is later discussed. So, if you have been raised with Christ, ladies and gentlemen, have you been? I wonder what you would say if I came round individually. Some of you might say, of course I have been. I wonder if some of us would be inclined to say, well, I think I am a little bit, a little bit raised with Christ. I have been praying a lot recently and reading quite a lot of the Bible and I and, and I've been trying hard, and I think I've managed to raise myself just a little bit. At least I've got my head above the ground, uh, above the water, as they say. Trouble is, it's so diff easy to slip back again, you'll see, Mr. Lecturer. So I don't know not really to say whether I am or I'm not. Uh, well, if that should be our response, then we need to spend a little time, don't we? Because if we respond like that, it's a very understandable reply but it shows that we've not yet quite understood exactly what the Apostle is saying. Raised with Christ is not a condition which I have to gradually attain to by my effort. Raised with Christ is, for the believer, a literal fact. I nearly said an historical fact. You have been raised with Christ, says Holy Scripture. So that when Paul says, if you have been raised with Christ, he's not asking you to entertain a doubt. It's not the if of doubt. It's the if of argument. That is why some of the new translations, such as the NIV, translate it not if you have been raised with Christ, but since you have been raised with Christ. It's the if of argument. Yes, and if you have been raised with Christ, God is not questioning, that is, if you are a believer, he's not questioning whether you have been. He's saying, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, since you have been raised with Christ, then these things follow, and do this, that, and the other. And the same thing applies, doesn't it, to that earliest statement in chapter 2, verse 20. If you died with Christ, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to ordinances? And we could afford just a little time, couldn't we? We have to make sure we've got that in our minds. 
if you died with Christ, why, as though you were living in the world, do you subject yourselves to ordinances? When did you die? For you have died. Well, the scripture has told us we died when Christ died. When we received the Saviour, his death was counted ours. And when he rose from the dead because we are joined with the Saviour, his life is ours as well. You see, if we don't understand clearly how we get this new life, then we're going to run into great difficulties and disappointments and frustrations when we try to live out that life. So the ifs, if you died with Christ, if you're risen with Christ, they are telling us how we got the life. And upon that, Paul is going to build now how we should live out that life. Let's um, listen to Paul then and use an illustration, if we may, to get the point once more clearly. Here's a poor unfortunate, and he's committed multiple murder. He has been condemned to the electric chair, and he's in his cell on death row. And I come along and I say, look here, old chap, you know, what made you so hostile to everybody was your liver was out of order. And what you want to do is to take up vegetarianism. That will help you. Because it'll put your liver right, and you, you won't be so inclined to see red and uh, be so pugnacious and hostile anymore. What do you suppose the man would reply? He'd say, what's the good of your dribbling there about vegetarianism? I'm as good as dead man. Vegetarianism isn't going to stop the execution. And so they lead him off eventually to the chair, and after he's dead, the guards, by special permission, allowed me to go in and see him there, now a corpse. And I say, you know, well, you ought really. I, I mean, vegetarianism is very good. You ought really to consider taking up vegetarianism. Vegetarianism is never going to give the man life, and he's dead in this world. How do we get our Christian life? If you died with Christ, says Paul, why are you still carrying on thinking that little regulations like touch not, taste not, handle not are going to give you new life? That is as foolish as telling the man who's been electrocuted to take up vegetarianism. We don't get life that way. We get life when we agree, first of all, with God that our sins demanded that we be executed. And instead of waiting for the final judgment for the sentence to be carried out and for us to be consigned to eternal perdition, we come round to agreeing with God and we say, yes, God, you're right. I agree to the sentence being carried out. That's what is repentance. And when we agree to that, then, hey, presto, God has a saviour ready for us he says, then, my good man, my good woman, take hold of my son, be joined to my son, and if you'll do that, then my law can count it that when Christ died, you die. And when Christ rose again, in giving him life, I give you life. And oh, what a marvelous presupposition that is that's going to be the foundation on which we build everything today. If you're risen with Christ, in giving Christ life, God has given you life because you have received Jesus Christ, his Son. So let's put that down formally, shall we, so that we can uh, get it clear in our minds once more. The question of our life, the life that we now have and that we're going to be asked to live out in practical affairs in our day-to-day -day existence. Our life, what is its source? Its source is God. Colossians 2, verse 12, having been buried with him in baptism, wherein you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. As I repeat, God, in raising Christ from the dead and giving life to that court, gave you life. 
And how would you get new life? By receiving Christ, because God has raised him from the dead. And says verse, uh, uh, you'll see, verse 3 of chapter 3, you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. The life comes from God. And how do I get it? How is it appropriated? Well, look, if you will, at 2 verse 12, it says you were buried with Christ, wherein you were also raised with him through faith in the operation of God that raised him from the dead. Through faith simply, not by effort, not by discipline, simply through faith. Who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead? Who gave him new life? Now let's get this clear. Was it my faith? You know, some people when they read that we receive eternal life by faith, say, ah, oh, well, my faith isn't quite strong enough. Still faith. And what they're really thinking is that somehow our faith produces this life. So let me take you back in imagination to the beginning of things, when our blessed Lord Jesus had died at Calvary and had been buried, and there was his body in the tomb. And I say to you, do you know what? Your only hope of ever having eternal life is if the body of Jesus Christ comes up out of this grave. You say, I know that, and I've been doing my best to get it out. I'm believing and believing and believing, and I hope if I believe enough, the miracle will happen and Jesus' body will come out of the grave. Well, once more, you would be a lunatic to say that, wouldn't you? It isn't our faith that brought Jesus Christ from the dead. It's God's working that brought Jesus Christ from the dead. How do I get it then? I get it like a can of petrol gets the petrol. It just opens its lid and takes it in, if you see what I mean. Excuse the crude metaphor. By faith, with my empty hand, so to speak, with my empty soul, I just receive the gift that God has to give me. And what is the nature uh, 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 of this life when I get it? Well, verse um, 4, uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4 tells us what its nature is. When Christ, who is our life, the life we have as believers is nothing other than the Lord Jesus. Anything other than him isn't life in this sense. It is the life of the living Lord living within us. And so we ask the next question, how is it imparted? How is this life imparted to me? And the answer that the uh, Colossians gives, not once, but many times over, we get this life through our union with the Lord Jesus. If you go in for marking the Bible, well, mark the little words, with Christ, now at the end of chapter 2 and the beginning of chapter 3. What a lovely chorus they make, don't they? 2 verse 20, you died with Christ. 2 verse uh, 12, you were buried with Christ. 2 verse 12 again, you were raised with Christ. 2 verse 13, you were quickened, you were made alive with Christ. 3 verse 3, your life is hid with Christ. And finally, 3 verse 4, when Christ is manifested, you shall be manifested with him, manifested with Christ. That's how we get the life then, in our union with him. That risen life, nothing less than the blessed Lord Jesus himself, is waiting as the mainspring of all our future development to work himself out through us in our daily living. This life, where is the source of it located? says, chapter 3, verse 1, If then you be risen with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated on the right hand of God. That's where the source of our life is located. We have 
no life but him. Thank you for listening to Biblical Insights with David Gooding. If you're interested in more of Dr. Gooding's teachings, check out our other podcast series or visit our website, myrtlefieldhouse.com, for free ebooks, sermons, and study notes.